Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to start a new series of videos called Tricky Exam Questions. Now, all of these questions I have chosen for a very specific reason. It could either be because the questions themselves are worded in an unusual way, or the answers they are expecting from you are a little bit sneaky and you need to give a certain answer or a certain detail in order to get full marks. It may also be difficult or tricky in how you have to interpret the question that they have given. I'm going to walk you through how to interpret the questions and then at the end of the video I'm going to give you the memo as well. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in matric and you're thinking about getting that distinction at the end of the year, you should think about getting my study guide. My study guide is filled with these tricky exam questions as well as pro tips on how best to answer them as well. So let's get into breaking down the question. So we have a plant hormone question here. And right off the bat, um, we need to pay attention from the moment we start reading the introductory sentence. So it says a clinostat, which is a device used to investigate plant growth responses. And it is a disc that rotates very slowly when the clinostat is switched on. Now, during an investigation on plant responses to light, so we now know that it's about phototropism, right? The procedure was followed. There were three pots. They had the same species of plant. Each plot was placed on one of three identical clinostats. And each of the apparatus, A, B, and C, was then placed in a box with a single opening. And each clinostat was treated in a different way over a period of five weeks. And they have now given us the results um, in the picture below. Now, immediately what you should do is you should identify which of those clinostats was moving and which wasn't. Now, we have three separate outcomes here. And um, two of them should be easy to identify, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, and the third one is a mixture of the two. So I'm going to show you how to identify who is moving and who is not. So first things first, let's look for the clinostat that is moving. Remember, if the clinostat is rotating, then the sunlight that is coming through this opening over here is going to be um, evenly dispersed, right? And if the sunlight is evenly dispersed, then so are the auxins, which means that when they move, they are going to grow straight, right? So that means B is going to definitely be our moving clinostat, because as it moves, each side of the plant gets equal amount of sunlight, and it's going to grow straight. On the other hand, which one of these then is the clinostat that is not moving at all? Now, remember, we are testing for the response to plant, right, and light. Now, if that's the case, one of these is responding to the light only. Now, I know already that C is going to be the one that is not moving at all. Why my reasoning for that? Well, we can see here, if we look in the picture, it's bending over towards the light. That's because the auxins are collecting on the dark side and it's causing cell elongation to them bend towards the light. But now here's the interesting one. What is A? Because A seems to go over to the light and then away and then towards and then away and then towards and it's got this squiggle all the way up. What you will actually find what's happening at A is that there is period moving. And what that means is we move it once and then we leave it for a couple of days and then we move it and then we leave it for a couple of days. So we're not regularly moving it. And because of that, it means some days it gets lots of sunlight on the one side. So it grows towards the light. Then you rotate it slightly. Now the bend is on the other side. Then the plant tries to grow back towards the light again, and then you rotate it away from the light again. And so each time you rotate it away from the light, it keeps bending towards the light, and then you rotate it away, and now you've got a bend going the other way. And so that's why it makes this squiggle. Now, this is important. This breaking down is important because you can see now in the questions, you need to know who is who and what um, setup is 
matching the outcome. So we'll look at the first question. And our first question here says, name the plant growth responsible to light. I think we all know that this is now testing phototropism, right? Easy one. But then we look at the next question. It says, state two factors that were kept constant during this investigation. Now, please be so careful. This is the one reason, one of the reasons why I chose this question uh, to do is because when they say what was kept constant or were kept constant, you may only, only, only give answers from the paragraph. You cannot come up with your own variables. So what were some of the things that they kept the same? Well, number one, they noted up here, they kept the species the same. Another one, they kept the clinostats the same. Another one, they kept the time period the same. They also were all placed in the same box with this, well, not the same box, but the same setup of the box with a single opening. And so you could have any two of those four that I've pointed out, but you may not come up with your own. You must take it from the paragraph if they're saying what was or what were kept. If it says what should be kept, then you can come up with your own and you must come up with your own, others that are not mentioned in the paragraph. So let's move on to the next question. It says give one reason why the results of this investigation may be considered unreliable. Now, we don't see that so often, do we? We often see questions saying what what was reliable about this experiment? Like, what did they do? So <clears throat> now what we need to do is we're going to look back at the paragraph and see what uh, did they not do, which could have led to reliability. So now let's quickly make a list of the three usual answers that we would give, and let's see which of the ones they haven't done. So when it comes to reliability, we speak about repeating an experiment, we speak about increasing a sample size, and we speak about calculating an average, right? So now it's saying, give one reason why the results of this investigation may be considered um, unreliable. Did they repeat this experiment? The answer is no, they didn't repeat the experiment. So that might be our answer. And we can, we can say the investigation was only done once or not repeated. Another answer that you could give is, did they increase the sample size? So did they use more than the three plants for each setup? So they only used one plant for each setup. They didn't use, you know, 10 in group A and 10 in group B. So it's definitely increasing the size. Now, I suppose the average answer here is not um, doesn't make sense to use because we cannot calculate average growth here in this particular example. So I want you to avoid the average answer because it's not applicable to this question. And that's why you mustn't just regurgitate answers in exams. You mustn't just rewrite the same things that you always do because it needs to be applicable uh, or be applied to the question that you're currently busy with. Now, moving on to our next question, it says, in which apparatus, A, B, or C, was the clinostat switched on and rotating slowly? Well, we've actually already done that earlier because I pointed it out to you, but it's definitely going to be B because, remember, we've got even distribution of auxins, so it goes straight. And then the tricky question, which, again, is why I chose this, it says switched off, but manually rotated uh, through 180 degrees once a week, and that's what gives us that squiggle, Right. And that's where we have um, A apparatus, right? Because that's why um, once a week it would grow towards the light and then you swivel it away. You turn it away and then it would do that bend. Now, the last question is another reason why I chose this as a tricky question is because it requires you to be very careful to only talk about what the question is asking. Sometimes people waffle and they give too many details and they actually don't answer the question. Look very carefully. It says, explain the effect of unilateral light, which is light coming from one direction only, on the distribution of auxins in plant C. Now, it is only for three marks. 
So I don't want to see anybody talking about, well, it collects on the dark side and there's nothing on the light side. So then the cells elongate on the dark side and then it turns and bends towards the light. And then um, that then makes a curve in the stem. You don't need all of that. That's not what the question is asking. The question is only asking about the distribution of auxins, which means the only three things you need to mention in this answer is the fact that the auxin is moving away from the light. So that's the first thing, because that influences its distribution, right? The second thing you need to mention is that there is a high concentration on the dark side. And the third and final thing that you need to mention is that there is a low concentration on the light side. And that's it. You don't need to talk about the fact that it bends and that it elongates. Do you see the question doesn't say, explain the effect on the stem of the plant or the growth of the plant? It doesn't say that. It just says, explain the effect of the distribution of auxins. So how does light affect the distribution or the density or the concentration of the auxins? And that is all you need to give. And that is why many people don't get those three marks because they talk about everything else, about the growth and the bending, but they don't talk about the concentration of the auxins. Now, here is the memo for these questions, if you want to go over them and just see how the wording is put so that you know exactly how to um, word this. Just take note of one final thing in memos. Whenever you see this here, it says mark the first two only, these ones over here. It means that they can only look at the first two answers because it's asked for two or it's asked for one. Please don't give three answers if they're asking for two because sometimes what happens is you've now given your three answers, right? The first one is wrong, the second one is wrong, but the third one is right. However, they can only mark these first two. So they actually just ignore the third one. So just keep that in mind when you're providing these kinds of um, answers when it says give two or name one. Keep that in mind. But if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Um, there are going to be lots more of these tricky question videos. It's going to be a whole series. So keep your eyes peeled for them as you work your way towards your exams and your tests. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.